Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Today I have a review that I've been waiting a good while to do now. And this review is, of course, for Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Leader Class Double Dealer. Double Dealer is considered number 23 in Earthrise, so that puts him right before Skylinks numerically. He's the only new Leader Class toy in the second wave of Earthrise, being repackaged alongside Optimus Prime. And this toy marks the second update we've received for Double Dealer since his original G1 toy. The other being his Thrilling 30 toy that was just a retool of Blitzwing. So now we have a much more accurate remake of the character, complete with his original modes. That's his large military vehicle mode, his, is it a Condor mode, I believe? Some sort of large bird. And then, of course, his robot mode. And his faction swapping gimmick is pretty much intact here, functions a little differently this time around. Now, one big difference between this new Double Dealer and the original toy is that this new one doesn't come with his Power Master partners that were the key behind him assuming his Autobot or Decepticon modes, very much in the vein of Armada Sideways. However, if you did buy the Generation Selects uh, Soundwave Spy Patrol 4-pack, those partners are included in that as remolds of Ratbat and Rumble. So if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Double Dealer in his packaging, which is pretty banged up. Then we'll open it up, we'll see his map piece, we'll look at the instructions, and then we'll see Double Dealer himself in all of his modes. Naturally, I'll be doing a lot of group shots with his partners, as well as the Thrilling 30 Double Dealer that I happen to have. I don't have the G1, so unfortunately I can't do that. And then at the end of the video, I'll be giving my final thoughts. So Double Dealer comes in your typical Earthrise Leader Class packaging. Got the big open window that shows him off. You can see his missile right there, and some other accessories down below. Uh, my box is all banged up because it came from Amazon, and lately they've just been absolutely horrible about shipping things to you in good condition. You know, there's any kind of bubble wrap or anything, they just throw it in an oversized box and let it get banged around. So, I'm getting kind of fed up with Amazon, but unfortunately, they're a pretty reliable source of these toys. So, you got to pick your battles. Luckily, I'm not an inbox collector. Otherwise, probably want a refund. All right, here is the side of his box, and you can see this really great artwork of Double Dealer on what appears to be some kind of alien world, further just kind of reinforcing the setting of Earthrise taking place you know, during the Transformers trek across space to eventually reach Earth. Uh, I do want to point out that Double Dealer is explicitly symbolized here as a Decepticon, despite the fact that he's actually, I think, officially supposed to be a mercenary. Or, you know, functionally, anyway, because he can go both ways. On the back here, you have renders of his three different modes, robot, vehicle, bird, and then here's kind of a modification of his vehicle mode that allows him to interact with the airlock system and become part of a larger MicroMaster base. So that is cool. And turning it here, just your standard Earthrise side panel. All right, so now that we've looked at the box, time to open them up. Okay, and here is his map piece, along with your decoder. You've got a bunch of travel lines, big planet here, and we identify the planet as Caminus, which if you've tuned into Transformers, you know, in recent years, that should be very familiar. It was introduced in the first IDW continuity, and then has become a mainstay for a lot of the fiction. You've seen it in Transformers Cyberverse, the new IDW continuity, and even the brand new uh, War for Cybertron show mentions Canvas. So that's become a major player in the fiction. Now here are the instructions. And this is a pretty big instruction book, and I want to point out that his instructions identify him as being a mercenary, not a Decepticon. Also the little inside of the packaging that I cut out for you also has a big mercenary symbol on it. So he seems to fall in the same place as, say, Exhaust, where he's outwardly identified as a Decepticon, but then when you peer more closely, it turns out he's actually neutral. Um, here are the tech specs. you got to open this up to reveal them. And these instructions are pretty big. I'm not complaining. Uh, very beefy. So up here, you just see how to put your guy together out of the box. How to get him in his proper robot mode. And then 
This bottom part is the transformation from robot to his bird mode. Continues on the top there. And then, instead of going from bird, you go from robot again to his missile launcher mode. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a shame. Wish they would have kept it kind of sequential, but they went robot and robot. And then here's his kind of fourth mode where you flip his ramp down, those stabilizers, lift his missile up and becomes kind of like a missile silo. And it's got the airlock connection there so you can connect to the bases. And they demonstrate that here with the Quintesson Judge toy, which as far as I know has actually been pushed back to wave three. So wouldn't expect to see it anytime soon. And then you get the decoder uh, how-to there on the side. All right, now here is Double Dealer's vehicle mode. And like I said, it's uh, some sort of a missile launching vehicle. I don't know if it's based on a certain real life vehicle or not. And it overall just looks pretty good. Holds together well, not too much, you know, in the way of gaps or anything. The missile itself here can kind of rest flat or you can tilt it up a bit if you want to, it's cool. See, it's got a gun here. This, I'm assuming is some sort of like a I don't know, radar dish or something. And then you got these little guns on the side and these are all removable accessories. So this guy does not hurt for extra parts. Now you'll notice that these pieces are kind of sticking upward a little bit. And that's because they're actually attached to the robot fists that for the life of me, I can't get it to like fold in 100%. They stick out a little bit like this. I don't know if I'm just doing something wrong. I mean, I've tried forcing them in, they won't go and I don't want to risk breaking them. So I don't know if I'm doing them wrong or just a design flaw. Uh, so it does cause these to point up a little bit. Kind of annoying, but not the end of the world. Uh, here, you have those like stabilizer pieces. And you have this ramp piece that covers the top of his head. Fortunately, he's got some pretty bad visible head syndrome. But you can deploy these like so. And you can bring his missile launcher all the way up as far as we go. Goes to about here. And it just looks like that. So nothing crazy. It's not a whole new mode for him, but it's a nice little bonus. It enables him to attach to your MicroMaster base in a way that's kind of meaningful. You know, actually looks like something. And the stabilizers here are a nice touch, right? Because if this becomes some sort of a stationary missile platform, you need something to kind of hold it all in place while this missile launches. So I like that. If we want to show off just how this connection works, I've gone ahead and brought out two new toys. We've got the Selects Grease Pit over here. And then the one I reviewed most recently, this is the Battlemaster Slitherfang, who is actually Quintesson aligned. So officially we got Septicon, Quintesson, and now Mercenary. So you can go ahead, connect these like so. Try to do this without messing anything up. There you go. You get this nice little road connecting everything. And it just works out pretty well. Gives you kind of a nice through way to the rest of your base. And it just really demonstrates the play pattern that this guy is going for with this little bonus mode. Now, putting this guy back in his normal vehicle configuration, I brought out his Thrilling 30 counterpart. And you may notice that his vehicle mode, it's not a rolling missile launcher like the original toy, but just a tank. And that's because this guy is a minor retool of the Thrilling 30 Blitzwing toy. So rather than a missile launcher and a bird, he turns into a tank and a fighter jet. Now on here, you'll see that he has an Autobot symbol visible. So something I want to touch on both of these toys do a bit of a remix to the original Double Dealer's faction swapping gimmick. For the original toy, the vehicle mode was kind of his, his alt mode, and it had no visible faction symbol. It was unaligned, didn't require any power masters to unlock or anything. So that was, you know, his, his disguise, right? As a robot in disguise. You didn't know who he was fighting for. And then... From this mode, you could attach one of his two Power Masters to transform him either into the Bird, which was his Decepticon form, it had visible Decepticon logos, or transform him into the Robot, which was his 
Autobot form. Both of these guys stray from that formula in that the new Earthrise toy doesn't have a faction visible in either of his secondary modes, be that vehicle or bird, but has a faction swapping gimmick in his robot mode. Whereas this guy is an Autobot as a tank, a Decepticon as a jet, and then he's unaffiliated in robot mode. So they both kind of do their own thing. Uh, so you know, for the purists out there, you're not gonna get your 100% faithful update either way. Though if you ask me, which symbols are visible and which modes are pretty minor detail when the rest of them knocks the look out of the park. Okay, now we're gonna transform Double Dealer from vehicle mode to beast mode. So the first thing I wanna do is remove accessories. So these little things here, they got to go. Just go ahead and take them off. Set them all aside here. Big missile launcher thing is actually going to come off also. And this whole assembly, oops, that's yeah, not supposed to come off. I'll do that. But here, it's supposed to be removed and just set aside. All right, now you're going to take these bits to the robot arms, swing them down until they lock in on the sides. There's the Decepticon symbols. And I'm kind of straighten the arms out, bring them around like so. And you're gonna grab these bigger panels, swing them out like this. I'm gonna bring these pieces down. And now what you wanna do, you're gonna bend his elbows back at a diagonal and then bring the form straight down and you want this tab here or sorry that slot to plug into that tab so you're gonna line it up just right you need to fidget with it a bit but it'll go in there you go so it should look like that flip the bird feet down if you want to now so not really gonna rush go ahead straighten that out and we're gonna lift this chest piece just kind of up and out of the way. Now here, we're gonna go ahead, kind of lift these up so they're not in the way of the legs. We're gonna unplug these panels from the sides of his thighs. And down there very deep, so they should come right out. Separate the legs. Now this part is a pain, I'm not gonna lie. And I had a lot of trouble off camera doing this the first time, so. Basically, swinging these up. Now it's on the double hinge. So, you can see right here, there's that first hinge. And there's a swivel and then a second one right there. So what we're doing now, we are bringing these back to where these tabs right here are gonna plug firmly into these little notches on the backs of his legs. And I gotta warn you, it's not gonna be fun or easy. In fact, just make our lives a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and fold the wings out now. Get them out of the way. So you just swing them out, run out to the side, and just keep them from driving you crazy. And you wanna swing this all the way forward while at the same time bringing this one like down. And there's gonna be some clearance problems and you're gonna fight with it, and you may, if you're really unlucky, like I was, have a leg pop off, which you don't want, but it could very well happen. And on some copies, apparently it's more prone than others, so just be aware of it. You're probably gonna have to deal with it. You gotta get everything to go the way you need it to. So it's gonna be very finicky, but you can do it. Actually, one of the most complicated transformation steps I've seen in a while. Here, let's bring these out of the way. It'll help a little bit if you fold these up. Just give yourself some more room. So, get them in there firmly. Try everything lined up. Press these together. All right. And you 
get these panels up and plugged into his sides right there. A little easier than the first time I did it, so that's good. I'm learning. Learn the, the tricks that are required to make this guy work. So just get everything in there, and it should look like this. We're going to flush up against his little torso area right there. So now, this piece, I'll flip it up, All right, and then this chest piece, bring it up, turn it around, we got the open side facing up, bring it all the way down, and you're gonna rotate this around to hold it in place like so. Now, before we go any further with the main body, I wanna do some things here. All right, this back panel, it opens up. So swing it open, and it reveals the bird head. See, it's cocked to the side, which is pretty cool. I'm digging this new trend with asymmetrical transformations. All right, so you're gonna swing this in, let this kind of face it back. Now his head may contact this piece a little bit. So kind of pull it away as you swing it in and it'll go. Might rub a little, but luckily there's no paint there. Uh, this piece, you're gonna bring it, bend it here, and this little thin area is gonna just kind of squeeze in like this. Turn the bird head around like so. You're gonna extend the neck. Open the mouth if you want to. Close that back panel back up. And these, you're just gonna swing inward. Everything should be nice and locked in place here. Make sure it's all even. Okay, so you have a bird. Pretty cool, but we're not done yet because you need to attach the accessories. So you wanna take your ramp and stabilizer assembly and your big old rocket launcher you're gonna plug it in here. It's gonna go in this hole, and then the smaller nub here is just gonna rest inside that little alcove, just to kind of keep it somewhat straight. So you get on there like that, and attach it to his back end. You're gonna do it by this black clip on the missile launcher, and this little thin area right here. So you just press it on, hold pretty firmly, and these, go ahead and rotate them around, just drop them down to the side against the body like that. And you get the missile launcher. His little guns here, I'm just gonna attach to his sides like that. And here. Nice and even. Okay. And then his weapons, you're gonna attach them in much the same way you did for the vehicle mode. So you're just gonna plug them in on the bottom there. Just give them little underbelly weapons. All right, here we go. Get them straightened out. And this is Double Dealer's Beast Mode. And it's pretty cool looking. I think for something that has to be both a robot and some sort of a missile truck, makes for a good looking bird too, and is pretty faithful to the original toy's appearance. There goes my bent a little. Now, the biggest difference between this configuration and the original toy, that the original had the end of his missile launcher on his underbelly. Now this is the official configuration, but fear not, gentle viewer, because this does come off and it has a spot to plug in right here. So you can, if you want to, for that G1 accuracy, attach it to his underside. And it's a little less noticeable than it was in the original toy. It doesn't stick out quite as much. But you can go for that look if you want to and still have, you know, this little blaster on top like the original. So they did a fantastic job of recreating this mode for a new updated toy with lots of articulation. I absolutely dig this. Uh, the wings, they can you know, bend like they need to. The wing tips can go up and down a bit. And they actually have a ratcheted motion for flapping, which means, you know, they'll stay up without issue. They can bear some weight if you need them to. The head, it's got great articulation, swings side to side. Though, because of the way it does swing, because of how it needs to transform, it, it's gonna be more toward this side on the hinge. So just beware of that. 
but the head can you know move around on the neck a lot mouth opens and closes and it just it looks really great uh, you got little toes which if you you know push down he'll lean forward a bit but it's strong enough to where he can bear his own weight without issue so i love this i think I, I just don't know how they could have done this mode better honestly it's it's perfect as far as i'm concerned uh the little extra bits here they integrate just fine just kind of go up against the side they're out of the way and you know the ramp gives them like a little tail feller that yeah, tail feather appearance can't talk today so yeah i think that this is uh it's great here's another comparison shot with the thrilling 30 toy and like i already mentioned this version of the character turns into a fighter jet rather than a big bird but you can see that the color layout was done in a way to you know evoke that bird between the purple wings the blue head he's even got painted details to kind of sort of resemble the bird i mean it looks more like a shark to me but you get the idea uh, he also color matches a lot better in this form because the thrilling 30 aside from like the cockpit is devoid of a lot of the red that's more visible in the vehicle and robot modes of the newer toy so you know kind of a greater resemblance there and again they're just two very different takes on the character and you know back in the days of thrilling 30 throwing in retools to give us characters that really don't match the body type they're retooled from was pretty common practice then so this was just kind of another victim of that another good example is like the night beat from bubblebee just you know aside from the colors and the head look nothing like night beat okay and with that it is now time to go for the robot mode so just like last time the first thing i want to do is remove accessories so go ahead and just unplug everything from this guy Guns off, underside guns, all that stuff. Got to remove it. This whole assembly here with the missile and stabilizers can just come right off. Let that be set aside for now. All right. So I want to kind of back this out the way we came in. So let's go ahead. We'll do the head first. So, flat back. So, let's go ahead, rotate the bird head, and you gotta get it facing this way specifically so that'll fit. You go this way, it doesn't work. So, the bird will be looking to his right. Huh, it's, like a, it's like a coin or something. He poured this in. Alright, so lift this piece up, flip all this in, try to scrape the robot head too much. Bring it like that. Go ahead and release this piece. So flip that up. Flip the chest all the way up till it tabs in up here. Put that back down. And the wings. Well, actually, let's close the back panel. The wings, we're just gonna kind of keep out of the way for now. Alright, we gotta get his legs folded back out. So you wanna unattach those side panels. Separate these halves. Now we're just gonna try to fold this out without popping anything off. See how successful I am. One of these is more prone to pop off than the other. Okay, so far so good. Just keep it going, wriggle it free. There's a lot of clearance issues here. All right, so we have this black piece out. Now what we wanna do is like Rotate the second hinge all the way up. There we go. So we're getting it. Let's fix that. You want to rotate it this way. So we're going to leave it like that. Let's go ahead and do this other side. Okay. We're getting it. We're getting it. So this stuff. And rotate. Cool. So, bottoms of his feet. Put it nice and flat. So you can kind of see this coming together now, huh? All right. The wings. Just want to take them. Hold them down like that. So we can get these panels going here. This thing. Just fold it back and leave it. So let's untab his arms. Fists out. Same thing 
here. Pull these back in all the way. like that okay so this is the base robot mode and I'll show you the articulation right now so his head is on a ball joint so look up and down a bit turn all the way around it's got your universal shoulders bicep swivel he has double jointed elbows because of the transformation and that leads into a bit of a problem that I'll show you he does have wrist swivel despite the fact that they swing inward so that's good a lot of the time when they have uh, fists that you know fold in for transformation, they skip the swivel, but in this case they didn't, so I appreciate that. He's got a waist swivel that is kind of hampered by the wings, but you can always kind of fold them up out of the way, so that's good. This is more like a, almost like coattails for him. Universal hips that are ratcheted in both directions, that's good. Uh, instead of a thigh swivel, he's got kind of a knee swivel, and that's due to transformation. And it's this little mushroom peg right here, show you that, that tends to be the problem. That black little mushroom likes to pop out of the little part that's holding it in there. So just be aware of that. It's an issue that I have and others have had. Um, I got kind of lucky because it's not super prominent for me. Oh, and then of course he has ankle tilt, so that's good. So he's got the full Monty of articulation. I think the only thing, oh, yeah, he's been. The only thing that he conceivably could have more would be double knees, but that's that's for very discerning collectors. I don't usually care if they have double knees or not. Uh, something I want to point out here. So you see his abs. The abs are molded in a way to resemble the original version of Nock, who is his Autobot Power Master guy. Uh, that's what he looked like in his like engine form plugged into this guy's abs. Now what's interesting is that this middle section of it, actual engine block, it comes off. It's just on a five millimeter connection there. And there's actually molded detail underneath it. So I don't know if that's just, if that comes off because, uh, I don't know if you want to be a purist and not have this on here if Knox not attached or what you know the idea is or if there were maybe some other plans for it that got dropped or maybe it was just easier to assemble it this way I don't know but he does have removable abs which is interesting now right now you can see he's got Decepticon symbols on his shoulders but we can always change that these panels right here just flip up and you got Autobot symbols underneath. And this would be a lot closer to how the classic toy would look, right? Because like I said, the original version, the robot mode was the Autobot mode. So just something to keep in mind if you want to be real OCD about it. Now, accessories. Got to do those, right? All right, so let's start with the little guns. They go on the sides of his legs right here. Come on, you want the, the longer side facing forward, right? So that's supposed to be the actual barrel of the gun. All right, same thing on this side. Going pretty easily, not too loose, not too tight, so that's good. All right, let's go ahead and do his backpack assembly thing. So you got this, you're gonna fold it this way. Now I wanna point something out that it almost seems like it's not meant to fold this way because when you start to go, this kind of pops off the hinge a little bit before it goes. Whereas if you do the other way, it's fine. So that's probably a design flaw, honestly. Go ahead, rotate these that way. All right, so the way this works is this part here is gonna go up inside these holes on that blue piece. And you want it where the ramp section's like up against his back toward him here. So go ahead, plug it in, and just let that kind of rest. That becomes like a backpack with wings for him. So it helps add to his size and impressive stature. Now, the big missile launcher thing. You're actually gonna separate the halves, like so. so the tip of it 
it's gonna go right on his shoulder like that and this larger part that becomes like you know a hand cannon or a blaster just goes in his hand plugs in just like so so you get that and lastly so the two accessories you're gonna plug in on the tops of his arms right here so this is a very well-armed mercenary and uh I just gotta say, look at this dude. He looks absolutely fantastic. Love this guy. Now, I mentioned an issue with his elbows, and we gotta get to that. So his first elbow hinge, it's fine, very stable. Second one, not so much. It droops down, it's not very load-bearing. And unfortunately, it's attached to a pin rather than, you know, say a screw, so there's no way to adjust it or make it tighter. Now, I don't know if they're all like this, but I've seen pretty unanimous reports that that's just a QC issue for the toy in general. So unfortunately, it's going to limit how you can pose this guy. You can either have him, you know, kind of resting his gun on the ground, or if you bring it all the way up, uh, he can hold it better. Oh, man. well, maybe not even that. <laughs> I guess you gotta kind of bring your shoulder up too a bit. So you have to distribute the weight in a way to where the bulk of it is taken off of that one hinge because it just utterly fails at holding his weapon up. And it's, you know, to be fair, it's a pretty heavy weapon. So that's, you know, one big QC issue. And then the other one, like I mentioned, is just the tendency for his lower legs to pop off which just because it didn't happen during this video doesn't mean it won't happen. I, I had some choice words for this toy when I was first experimenting with it. And here again is the Thrilling 30 toy. And just like his other modes, he's a pretty different take on the typical double dealer concept. You can see he's obviously based off of Blitzwing just with a double dealer head. Now one thing that is kind of painful about looking at this the Voyager toy is almost as tall as the leader class toy. We're talking something that is 20 bucks more, really 25 more because back when this guy came out, Voyagers were 25. So twice the price and they're the same height. Now, granted, leader double dealer is much stockier than the Voyager class toy. He's got a lot more heft to him and he is wider, but it is a pretty good indication of just in what, less than a decade or so of uh, how much the price of these has gone up because despite the fact that he's going to have more mass, I, I promise you it's not twice as much. <laughs> like The fact that he costs twice as much as this guy, it hurts. It, it really is a reminder of just where the toy market is right now. So just... Keep that in mind, leaders are still pretty small, and even though this guy bucks the trend in War for Cybertron of being a Voyager with armor, you know, he is just a self-contained leader, he's still a lot smaller than leaders of, you know, yesteryear. So you gotta be comfortable spending 50 bucks on getting this much toy. Now, one thing I wanted to bring up real quick was retool potential for this guy, uh, because a lot of people speculate on that. Typically, Hasbro likes to get at least two uses out of each mold, right? Recoup some of that cost of building the mold in the first place. So a lot of people were saying, well, you know, what could this guy be? And the two that I've heard most often, one is Cybertron Defense Red Alert, who you can see on the right, who is a, you know, Unicron Trilogy character that does have a rather similar alt mode to Double Dealer. The other is the G1 Predator character, Stalker, now, I don't have Stalker himself, but I do have his recolor, which is Machine War Soundwave. And you can see how very similar that design is to what we see with Double Dealer here. He's got a shoulder mounted, you know, it looks like some sort of radar thing. Now, in his case, it goes on the opposite shoulder, but there's no reason he can't swap these. And you can also see how kind of the canopy section of the vehicle mode forms their lower legs. So there's quite a bit going on there as far as some similarities. Now, either way, if they do a retool into these characters, 
they are going to have a superfluous bird mode attached to them, unless they actually nix that entirely, but that seems like more trouble than it's worth. More likely, kind of like what they did with the uh, Laser Prime from Titan's Return, is they'll just end up with an extra alt mode because they are a retool. Which is fine, right? As long as it doesn't take away from anything, and, you know, in his case, it really doesn't. Like, you could ignore the bird mode if you wanted to. So, either of these can be a pretty valid option. Personally, I see Stalker as a much more likely candidate, just because the designs match so much more. He is a G1 character, which is, you know, it's all the rage right now with Hasbro and Takara. And you don't have the issue of a name clash because, you know, this character is Red Alert, but in G1, Red Alert's a very different character who already has a War for Cybertron toy. In fact, he's getting a second one because of Netflix. So I think it'll be Stalker if they do that. And I'd be totally okay with that. I love me some European exclusive G1 references. You don't get a lot of those outside of like the old collector's club. So you gotta take it where you can get it. And if they do Stalker from this, either through mainline or exclusive, whatever, you could go a step further and give us a Machine War Soundwave as a double whammy. May, may not happen. You know, Machine Wars doesn't seem to be very popular outside of a pretty small niche bubble that I find myself in. But I can dream. All right, now this review would not be complete without showing off how Double Dealer interacts with his two Power Masters. So, of course, I brought out Knock and Scar. And these are supposed to be their, like, you know, engine modes or, you know, Power Master modes, whatever you want to call it. So you can see they really don't look like engines these days because they are retooled from cassettes. Here's their little faces saying hi. So the way these interact with this guy is his chest flips down and you can fit one of them inside. Now, I was worried about this, about how you know well they were gonna fit, if at all, because these molds, if you saw my review for Rumble and Ratbat, you know that uh, they don't fit inside a Soundwave's chest or Sound Blasters, at least not without really forcing it and risking breaking some of that clear plastic. So I was worried, like, are they going to fit inside this guy? Well, let's find out, shall we? So you add, place it in there, and it's slightly snug, but it goes in without really too much force at all. Now, as far as what you're supposed to do from here, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know if they just go inside and you just kind of close it back up like sound wave style and they're just kind of hidden or if you're supposed to turn it around and bring it up like that and you know, show them off. Me personally, I, I would think it'd be something along these lines, but I can't be too sure. And of course, this is a little redundant because he has the molded knock right here in addition to being visible on the chest. But, you know, again, you could always remove that if it, bother, if it bothers you, though you can't get rid of the side details, unfortunately. All right, so that's one of your options. Take Knock out, and let's put a Scar in. I don't know which way it's supposed to be right side up or what, but... All right, so there's Scar. Normally, he wouldn't be visible from Double Dealer's robot mode, but it's a new toy. And to complete the look, naturally, we got to swing these panels down here bring out his evil side I'm gonna remove the accessories to give him the clearance to do so all right now you have a much more sinister looking double dealer and yeah I dig this I, I love that he's got compatibility with these guys would I prefer that they were included with the toy yeah especially for 50 bucks and him not being very big. And would I prefer they actually looked like Power Master engines? Again, yeah. But your design team at Hasbro these days are very much constrained by budgeting. And you know, that's not their fault. They're trying to make stuff, corporate's telling them, nope, can't do it. So they've been getting very creative lately. You know, They made a cassette four pack that had this guy's Power Masters for a toy that wasn't even out yet. And they also included that accessory pack that's supposed to be dropping with the Centurion drone to give us a lot of the things that we're missing, like Optimus Prime's roller. So you can see that the love is there. Like, 
these guys that make these are trying to make this work. They want to see us, you know, be happy and want to celebrate the brand with us. So I really appreciate that. It's not perfect, but when you're working with a budget, yeah, it's kind of the best you got. Now, of course, these guys do have their shield modes, right? Just like the other cassettes. So they both have pegs that swing down. They are a pain to get down. But you can get them out there. And because he is covered in five millimeter ports, you can always attach them like armor too. So he can just wield them if he wants to. So he always got storage for them, whether they go in his chest or on his arms or legs or back, whatever. And it is just, it's really good to see the old trio reunited after decades. And I'll go ahead and end this review with a shot of our three guys just hanging out together. And, uh, you know, it's time to give my final thoughts. So, Double Dealer is a really well-designed toy. You know, everything that they did to modernize the character, to bring it into the 21st century, uh, to make it viable with today's market, make it compatible with the rest of Earthrise. I mean, I think he pretty much knocks it out of the park. Now, there is the issue of his QC, and it's some pretty severe QC issues. So that's kind of up to you whether or not you can get past those. Uh, in most cases, it seems that you can work around them just fine. You know, just be careful transforming the legs and pose him properly so where he, you know, he can actually hold his weapon. Uh, if you're a little more technically inclined, you may be able to actually fix his arms and legs, but I, I don't really have the know-how to mess with that and I'll probably just break my toy. So QC issues aside, um, he is a great figure for what you get. I think what you get is a little lacking for $50. Even with the, you know, the very small accessories, I mean, that's cool. It's nice to see, but being honest, you know, Voyager Roadbuster from Thr Thrilling 30 had more accessories than this guy does. You know, and he was 25 bucks. So it's good to see, but not really an excuse for why this guy costs as much as he does. If he had actually come with his Power Master partners, then I would say, yeah, easily worth 50 bucks. Especially if they hadn't just been retools of cassettes and had been proper, you know, engine mode guys. I would have been over the moon with this. Now, doesn't mean I dislike this toy. I do think it's overpriced. I, you know, unless you're really hankering to get a double dealer, might wait and see if this goes on clearance. Though to be fair, I did get this for sale. It was like 42 bucks on Amazon, so I already got it for pretty cheap. But yeah, I, I would say recommended if you're okay with spending more than you probably should for this. But of course, that is simply how I feel. Now having said my piece, I wanna know what do you all think of Double Dealer? Do you think he's a good toy? You know, do you think he's adequately faithful to the original? Uh, can you get past his QC issues? And do you think he's worth the price? Maybe I'm wrong. You know, a lot of the time I speak out against the price of a transformer. I have a lot of people online tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. So I could be wrong. Either way, let me know what you all think in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like, let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. And thank you for joining me for this very long awaited look at a proper update to Double Dealer. And with all that said, I will see you next time.